India. It is the seventh largest country by area and with more than 1.3 billion people. It's the second most populous country as well as the most populous democracy in the world. A group of Mongolian journalists visited India by invitation of the Ministry of External Affairs of India, Delhi, Mumbai and Patna. These cities were on our itinerary. The National Stock Exchange of India, Film City, Prince of Wales Museum, Indian Institute of Mass Communication, Karmapa International Buddhist Institute, Bodhgaya, and so on. These are the places we visited during the journey. Hello, my name is Patsir Namshir. I am a journalist with MNB World and I'm also one of the Mongolian journalists who visited India almost a month ago. It was my first time in India, so everything was totally new, surprising and impressive. Diplomatic relations between India and Mongolia were established on December 24, 1955. India was the first country outside the socialist bloc to establish diplomatic relations with Mongolia. Since then, there have been treaties of mutual friendship and cooperation between the two countries in 1973, 1994, 2001 and 2004. In May 2015, Prime Minister of India visited Mongolia. It was the first time an Indian Prime Minister had visited our country. I am delighted to visit Mongolia. It is a great honor to be the first Prime Minister of India to do so. It is a special privilege to come on the occasion of two important milestones that unites us. 25 years of democracy in Mongolia and 60 years of diplomatic relations between our two countries. I am deeply grateful for your welcome and hospitality that have touched our hearts. You have embraced us with unlimited generosity and warmth of a true friend. There are not only diplomatic relations, but also centuries-old religious and cultural ties between the two countries. The historic and cultural collaboration between India and Mongolia is the most fascinating and unique. In modern times, Buddhism was promoted by cultural and literary contacts between the people of India and Mongolia. My endeavor is to bring uh, more uh, uh, intensity, more depth and uh, to elevate it to a level uh, where the partnership becomes uh, commensurate with the amount of goodwill that we have to get more economic content uh, into uh, India and Mongolia bilateral relations. Uh, they are already, as it is wonderful, uh, but my endeavor would be to take it to another level by pushing the two major projects, uh, one is the Mongolian uh, refinery and the second one is the uh, Center for Excellence in ICT.
The first city we visited was Mumbai. Mumbai is the capital city of uh, the Indian state of Maharashtra. It's the economic powerhouse and financial capital of India and one of the most industrialized cities in the world. It's also the most modern city in India. Once a group of seven islands, Mumbai is now a large island interconnected by long bridges. Mumbai is now a confluence of the past, present and cutting-edge modern. When you visit Mumbai, I'm sure you'll see the Gateway of India. The Gateway of India is one of the major tourist attractions in the city. It was built during British rule and was inaugurated in 1924. The structure is a basalt arch, 26 meters high, and it was erected to commemorate the landing of King George V and Queen Mary when they visited in India 1911. Then the construction of the monument was completed in 1924. In earlier times, it would have been the first structure that visitors arriving by boat in Mumbai would have seen. Our journey lasted for two days in Mumbai. The weather was uh, very pleasant and we enjoyed visiting some interesting places there. One of them was the Prince of Wales Museum. Uh, that was the time British ruled India. So British government gave the land as the architect of this building. The Prince of Wales Museum is one of the most significant museums in India and it's the main museum of Mumbai. It was founded in the early years of the 20th century. The foundation stone was laid by the Prince of Wales on his visit to the city in 1905 and the building was constructed in 1914. During World War I, the building served as a military hospital and was finally inaugurated in 1922. This museum is considered as a heritage structure in Mumbai because of its admirable architecture. The building is surrounded by a garden of palm trees. The museum showcases several collections of ancient artworks, sculptures and artifacts in its galleries. After the inception of the renovation project in 2008, many new galleries were opened, which contained artworks of Hindu god Krishna, textiles and Indian traditional costumes. The museum houses approximately 50,000 exhibits of ancient Indian history categorized primarily into three sections – art, archaeology and natural history. Our next destination was Film City. It is actually Bollywood, Indian movies. Film City is a huge film shooting area in Mumbai. Your visit to Mumbai is incomplete till you have had a taste of Bollywood. Indian cinema is the world's largest film industry in terms of film production with an annual output of 1,986 feature films. Film City was built in 1977 by the state government to provide facilities and concessions to the film industry. It is situated in the western suburb of Mumbai and is spread over 521 acres of lush green, picturesque land. 
It has been the shooting location for almost all Bollywood films. It has all types of location available for shooting, including a temple, prison, court, lake, mountains, fountains, and even a man-made waterfall. There are about 60 shooting locations. Almost all the major production houses, renowned filmmakers, world-famous stars and also Indian television industry shoot their films here and do most production work as well. Yes, uh, if a Mongolian uh, wants to come here, we are ready to welcome them. And our producer, if they want to go the, uh, and shoot in Mongolia, then you ask your uh, country or a leader of your country or a head of your country to promote them in there, to give facilities there. Then it's, uh, with collaboration Mongolia and India, it's a very uh, good opportunity for both uh, countries here. Yeah. In Mumbai, we visited the National Stock Exchange of India, or NSC. It's the leading stock exchange of India, located in Mumbai. The NSC was established in 1992 as the first demutualized electronic exchange in the country. NSC launched electronic screen-based trading in 1982, internet trading in 2000, which were each the first of its kind in India. National Stock Exchange has a total market capitalization of more than 2.27 trillion US dollar, making it the world's 11th largest stock exchange as of April 2018. Mumbai is well known for many things. Among them, I would like to mention three things. First, its film industry. Mumbai is famous for Bollywood movies throughout the world. Second, Mumbai is the economic powerhouse and financial capital of India. Third, its IT technology. By developing IT technologies, they are trying to solve many problems. They are trying to improve the quality of life of the people and they are trying to build smart cities. Always on the move, the bustling metropolis of Mumbai is a city that never sleeps and has a lot of for the traveler. Mumbai has a dense population of 23 billion people, old and new, rich and poor. Classic and modern, it's all here in Mumbai. Thousands of years, Delhi is the doorway to the subcontinent, due to its strategic location in the north. It's the capital of India and has been a seat of power almost throughout its entire history. For centuries, it has literally provided a passage to India, because if you ruled Delhi, you ruled India. Rajputs, Turks, Afghans and British have ruled Delhi at different times in its history. It has been attacked, conquered, destroyed and rebuilt several times. This constant change of rulers and regimes resulted in a multicultural influence that's unique to Delhi and this is clearly evident in the many diverse monuments. For example, the Red Fort was built by Emperor Shah Jahan and stands strong even today. Then there is the Kutab Minar, the tallest tower in India. And today, Delhi, the national capital territory, is a city 
and the Union Territory of India, containing New Delhi, the capital of India. Delhi's urban area has the population of over 26 million people, making it the world's third largest urban area after Tokyo and Jakarta. In New Delhi, we visited the Ministry of Mines. The country is endowed with huge resources of many metallic and non-metallic minerals. Mining sector is an important segment of the Indian economy. Since independence, there has been a pronounced growth in the mineral production, both in terms of quality and value. India produces as many as 95 minerals, which includes 4 fuel, 10 metallic, 23 non-metallic, 3 atomic, and 55 minor minerals. In the federal structure of India, the state governments are the owners of minerals located within their respective boundaries. The central government is the owner of the minerals underlying the ocean within the territorial waters up to the exclusive economic zone of India. India's mining industry is characterized by a large number of small operational mines. The number of mines in India was 1531 in 2018. India's ranking in 2015 as compared to world production was second in barates, third in chromite, co, lignite and zinc, fourth in kyanite and lucite, silimonite, fifth in iron ore and steel, sixth in bauxite ore, seventh in manganese ore, eighth in aluminium. We visited the Karmapa International Buddhist Institute. Kibi warmly welcomed us with traditional white scarves. <laughs> The Karmapa International Buddhist Society is newly founded, non-profit society. Since 1990, the institute has been successfully providing Buddhist education to students from all over the world. The institute is a meeting point of Eastern and Western culture, religion and science. The students from all over the world benefit from teachings of highly qualified Buddhist teachers. As a Dharma teacher, be it Kempo or be it a layperson professor, doesn't really matter. I think the biggest responsibility you have is, you know, uh, like the responsibility of a bodhisattva. I'm not saying the teachers are bodhisattva, but the responsibility is exactly the same, because uh, responsibility is to make them a good human being. You know, I mean, otherwise you cannot become a good Dharma practitioner. So in order to become a good Dharma practitioner, we have to try to help them to become a good human being, which is the most difficult task in the whole world, you know. So it is very, you know, very big responsibility. Kibi has been conducting courses on Buddhism and the Tibetan and Sanskrit language independently for more than 20 years. As a result, Many people who studied here are now successful scholars of Buddhism, working in major universities worldwide. Kibi is situated in the south of New Delhi, in the peaceful Kutab institutional area. It's an ideal location for Kibi, which aims to combine the best of both the ancient Buddhist and modern scholarly traditions.
In New Delhi, we met Mongolian ambassador to India, Mr. Rambolt, and asked him about the relations between the two countries. Mongolia and India have a centuries-old relationship in spirit, culture, and religion. We, Mongolian people, believe that India is a sacred place of Buddhism. The spiritual ties give our two countries the advantage to develop diplomatic relations and cooperate closely. Over 60 years ago, Mongolia and India established diplomatic relations. In earlier times, we had a good experience of cooperation in the political and cultural sectors. Nowadays, both of our countries are trying to develop this friendly relationship and bring it to an even higher level in many sectors such as economy, trade, agriculture, education and science. I would say that there are some positive results of this achievement. All of you probably know that the Prime Minister of India visited Mongolia in 2015. It was a very important visit for relations of Mongolia and India. The last destination of our journey was Bodh Gaya and Mahabadi Temple. Bodh Gaya is the most holy place for Buddhists. It's a religious site and place of pilgrimage associated with the Mahabadi Temple complex, located about 110 kilometers from Patna. Quiet dawn, bird song, worship, pilgrims, magnificent temples and beautiful surroundings. It is the wonderful morning of Bodh Gaya. We arrived at Bodh Gaya at 5 a.m. As you can see, very impressive place welcomed us. It is known as the place of birth of Buddhism about 2500 years ago. It is the place where Gautama is said to have obtained enlightenment under what became known as the Bodhi Tree. According to tradition, Buddha was born in 563 BC. He renounced his family at the age of 29 and traveled and meditated in search of truth. Then he attained enlightenment under the Bodhi Tree. Enlightenment is a state of being completely free from lust, hatred and delusion. The Mahabodhi Temple was originally built about 1600 years ago. Every day, hundreds of pilgrims and tourists come to Bodh Gaya. Many countries built their own temples and monasteries here. In 2002, Mahabadi Temple, located in Bodh Gaya, became UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Bodhi tree is located behind the main temple. It was under this tree that Gautama Buddha sat during his enlightenment. The present tree is considered a descendant of the original tree. India, the history of thousands of years, great heritage and traditions, dense population, variety of religion, many colors of life, unforgettable.